So people of God, if you aren't experiencing OMG moments, you may want to stop and pinch yourself and say, what, 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 what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Because they happen all the time. You see, while many may say OMG and not truly give it to God, but it is God that is at work in our life. The Bible says every good and every, every good thing comes from the Lord. You know, when you, when you talk about the parting of the Red Sea, those, those that were present there, they, they couldn't help but say, oh, MG. When you talk about the plagues, the plagues that God sent to those in Egypt because they would not let God's people go, you say, oh, MG. When you're talking about the, 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 the crucifixion and, and everything that exists and how the very history of this country, of this world rests on the shoulders of the crucifixion, the, the history of it all, you can't help but say, OMG, countless numbers of friends that have gone to the Middle East, that have gone to various parts of the of the world and that and have seen some things that have left them saying oh my god you see when we when we use that term in in, in our lives it it may be multifaceted but it's not easily comprehended but it's but the scripture suggests that there is divine wisdom that God has, has, is imparting in us when we have those experiences. There is a purpose surrounding those experiences. There is a degree of, of comfort found in the midst of those experiences. So it's important to approach these OMG moments with faith, seeking understanding, wisdom, and strength from God. Because it's God, it is God alone that's at work. I love to tell folks that Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. That when we scratch our heads and we're like, I, I, I don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand why I'm going through this and dealing with this. But we have to be reminded that Romans 8, 28 is still there. Uh, no one has wiped it out. No one has e erased it. And it reminds us that uh, it says, and as we know, for those that, 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 that all things work together for those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Now, this, this, this verse conveys the notion that even during challenging or, or distressing times, God can work for the ultimate good for those who have faith in him. Did you know OMG moments are not just great moments? There's, there are challenging moments. There are sometimes there are tragedies. And, and you know, we, we, we heard about the situation with the lost submarine. What a, what a, what a tragedy. What a tragedy, and we need to certainly hold those, those families up in, uh, up, in, up in prayer. But we have to know that when, when, when scientists do all types of exploratory things, there are things that there are tragedies that come with it. You know, uh, all of the trips to the moon has not always been great trips. Some didn't, some didn't make it back. And, and so that's just the nature of science, science, individuals sacrificing. And, and as time goes on, there will be submarines and trips down. Uh, they're uh, searching for all kind of information that will be successful, but we need to keep them in our prayers. And, and I'm sure when the loved ones got the news, it was an OMG moment for them. Some of you have gotten some bad news. And you say, oh my God, 
How can this be? How could how, how, how could this be? It's, it's over. Oh, my God. How many of us have stood uh, over loved ones? And oh, my gosh. They happen. But we got to look for God in every situation. Look for God in these OMG moments because God is doing something. God is doing something in every single situation. And it's Regardless if you can comprehend it, regardless if you can understand it, it's going to work out for your good. You say, well, Pastor, how, how, can, something, how can something like this work out for my good? Because God tells to the church, to the, church, to the people of God, to the followers of, of the faith, he says that, that, that he will do exceedingly abundantly above. God, 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 will, God will take care of you. And he would do for you more, more than what you could ever imagine. And I remember uh, coming home to visit for a period of time. I was scheduled to go to the Highway Patrol Academy. I was... Pastor Jackson, I almost, almost became a law enforcement professional. And I came to uh, Miami uh, for a couple of months waiting on the academy to open. I was already fully vetted and processed and was ready to go to the academy. And I had like three months, so I came here to visit. And um, got a little bored and decided I might as well find a little work to do. And, and so I went to this bank and I applied for this job. And uh, since when I was in the Marine Corps, I was kind of over all of the uh, uh, mail uh, routes and all of that stuff that existed on the base, I saw a position open. It was a mail clerk position. So I applied for this I apply for this mail clerk position, and I'm waiting like in the, in the waiting room, and the, the HR director comes out, and she says to me, um, uh, come, she says, come with me, and we go up, and she takes me all the way up to the, the penthouse of the bank. And I said to her, I said, uh, are you aware I apply for the mail clerk position? And I'm going up now to the penthouse. <laughs> like, maybe I put something incorrect on the application, but uh, <laughs> mail clerk, just mail clerk, just mail clerk position. So I get taken up, you know, to the top floor, and she says, um, the chairman of the bank has a great deal of interest in the mail uh, department. And I called them and told them we had a, sergeant in the United States Marine Corps, and he said, well, I'd like to meet that sergeant, <laughs> okay? So I go up there, and I go into his, his suite and everything, and he greets me and everything, and he says, well, uh, I understand you're a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps, and I'm looking for someone to take charge and run this place and clean up this and fix this and fix that. He said, you look like you can do that. I said, yes, sir. Now, I was, a, I was young. I was young, about 20, what, well, mom, about 22 years old, somewhere like, you know, real young, real young. Okay. And, I, and I told him like this. I said, well, I, I thank you for that, but I'm, I'm scheduled to go to the academy to be a state trooper with the Florida Highway Patrol. I was quite happy and quite proud of that. And he says, how much will you be making as a state trooper? Now, I know this is not going to make sense, and I got some age on most of you, right? And I say, $18,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I know that don't sound like too much, but that was quite a few years ago, all right? <laughs> Eighteen, And he says, $18,000. He said, well, what if I paid you much more than that and you won't have to worry about being shot at? <laughs> and uh, that sounds pretty good. And I said, well, how much he gives me the amount? 
And I said, I'm sure when I take this information home, <laughs> that's going to be a good deal. So anyway, he pays me more than that. And I deem that to be an OMG moment in my life because I couldn't have written that out. I couldn't have, there was nothing I could have done to set that whole situation up. And it was God all by himself, it was God all by himself. And, 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 and that particular situation got tested. So they sent me to take a polygraph. Check this out. They sent me to take a polygraph. And I'd already been polyed by the FBI and all those folks because I've been, been cleared to become a Howard. So they sent me to take a polygraph. And I'm giving information to those waiting to take the polygraph because I'd already done taken it and the guy told me my score was perfect. He said, you must be a, a pastor's kid. I said, no, no, I'm not a pastor's kid. He said, this is a perfect score. So I'm thinking, well, you know, in order to pass a polygraph, you just tell the truth, right? Tell the truth. So I give all these folks advice on how to take it. I'm like, I told everybody in there, just tell the truth. So everybody goes through and get their results and they all waiting on me to come out to give them my results. So I come out of, <laughs> I come out of the, the, uh, the, the polygraph room with my head down. <laughs> and they said, what happened? What happened? I said, I failed. <laughs> you failed. I said, yeah, I failed. And there was a question that they kept asking me. And it was like, have you ever sold drugs on the job? And I'm like, nope. Absolutely not, nope. They kept asking that question, and that was a question that caused me to fail. But here's God intervening. They give the message back to the chairman of the bank says your sergeant in the United States Marine Corps can't pass the polygraph. And this is what he tells the HR director. He tells her, you find someone somewhere <laughs> that can clear him for the poly. And so they send me somewhere and I, I pass with flying colors. But what that did, that just, that was a test that was a good test to, for me to be able to see that God was in it all the way. That God was in it all the way. And so I say, I share these OMG moments to each of you so that you will be alert as to what God is doing in your life. You'll be alert to know that God is not sleeping. You'll be alert to know that God will work things out for your good. And, and God will do everything he can to exceed your expectation. You see, these moments reminds us that even in the face of adversity, God is present and can turn any situation around for his ultimate purpose, regardless, regardless what it is. You say, well, well Pastor, what about what happened with Lazarus? Lazarus was dead for three days. When, when Jesus showed up, the people, people thought, you know, why are you here? It's over. And I want to say to you today, when God is in it, it's never over. In fact, it's only over when God says it's over. You keep believing. You keep trusting. You keep standing on his word. God promised even in this 2023, it's still something that you can bank on. It is still something that you can take to your spiritual bank. You know, I say spiritual bank and cash in. <laughs> what well, God said it, cash in on it. What well, God said it, cash in on it. And you know, sometimes for our sake, just for our own mental, sometimes we, 
when we pray, you know, God doesn't have to be reminded, but it's good for us to say, Lord God, you promised me that you would do X, Y, and Z. You promised me, Lord God. You promised me, Lord God. You spoke to me. You promised me. And sometimes it help us. It help us. So he loves to leave us in awe, people of God. He loves to leave us in awe. He loves to leave us speechless. He loves us to love to leave, leave us at a place where, where our range of emotions is just off the chart. And he leave us saying these words, oh, MG. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And he longs every day to allow each and every one of us to have our OMG experiences with him.